So get a load of this. I found something that actually works really well. What you see right there is a 250 watt incandescent light bulb. And I found that if I put this in series with the primary side of the ballast, so this bulb is between the outlet and the ballast, uh, it reduces power to the ballast enough such that the current going to the mercury vapor bulb is now uh, from the, what was it before, like 0.65 or 66 amps down to 0.53 amps, which is absolutely perfect. So this bulb is now getting a perfect amount of power. Um, if we do a rough calculation, now I'm not measuring the arc voltage, but if we assume it's say 105 times 0.53, and that's 50 watts exactly so uh yeah that's perfect and this works really well and as you can see the bulb is just dimly glowing there and uh, i have this multimeter measuring the voltage across the bulb so the bulb is seeing about 19 volts so if our line voltage is 120 volts that means the ballast right now is currently seeing about 101 volts and uh, that's why the lamp current's gone down. The ballast is not seeing as much voltage. So, uh, this actually works really well and it sprung me up a really nice idea. As far as I can tell, this seems to work uh, just as well as if I were to get a capacitor and put it in series with the uh, mercury vapor bulb. The only downside is, because the ballast is not seeing as high of a voltage, it's not providing as high of an open circuit voltage to the mercury vapor bulb. Um, if open circuit voltage is 250 volts, well actually let's, let's pretend it's 240 volts, that means at a, uh, I don't need the calculator, that means at 101 volts open circuit voltage would be around 202 volts. So uh, I guess that's still fine because the ballast I was using before was uh, had an open circuit voltage of 200 volts, so this downside doesn't even really apply here, the bulb will have no problem at all. So yeah, this works really well. So I've been thinking, I wonder if there's a way I could squeeze not only the ballast, but this socket, this secondary socket with this incandescent light bulb, all into the fixture. But then I thought of something else. The bulb has uh, 19 volts across it, and our line current is 0.53 amps. But if we take the voltage across the bulb, 19 volts, and multiply it, by the line current, 0.53 amps, that gives us about 10 watts. That's the amount of power going through this bulb. So what I could do instead is buy, say, go on eBay, actually buy a resistor that can handle this much power. You can buy high, high wattage uh, resistors. They have like metal heat sinking or whatever on them. Buy a resistor uh, that'll be able to handle this much power and have the right amount of resistance to cut the voltage to the ballast down to 100 volts or so, um, the resistor would be a lot smaller. It'd only be like this big or whatever. It would fit in the fixture fine. And uh, that would actually work really well. If we know the voltage across the bulb and the current across the bulb, we should be able to find the resistance. Uh, R equals uh, V over I. So 19 volts divided by 0.53 amps and that should be the approximate resistance of the bulb so about 36 ohms so if we go on eBay I was looking at uh, looking at 100 watt resistors see they have a metal heat sink on them and uh, you can get them for quite cheaply there there's one 30 ohm 100 watt for six dollars and if uh, if I'm cheap enough I could, because I, I don't think I'll need a 100 watt one, I think I could get by with a, uh, I could probably get by with a 10 watt one, but it would get extremely hot, dissipating 10 watts of power, so I'd want to get at least a 20 watt one. Uh, I can get two 20 watt, 30 ohm resistors for four bucks, and uh, that's actually really nice. Uh, if we go down here, here's some metal cased ones. So yeah, I'm in really good shape. So, uh... I think instead of trying to squeeze that big uh, that second socket and that big light bulb in there, I will grab on eBay an appropriate high wattage resistor 
that'll be a lot smaller because uh, like even the 100 watt unit I showed you at first that's only like this big and uh, that should be able to fit like say in that top part just perfectly and then stick the ballast in the bottom part there maybe rearrange the lamp socket I'm not sure but uh, that should be able to work really well I just want to make sure I get my resistance right the problem with incandescent light bulbs are their resistance actually changes when they're cold the resistance is a lot lower than when they're hot so uh, I'll have to do some tests I'll, uh, I'll hook that bulb straight up to a 20 volt power supply and uh, measure its resistance that way and that'll work really good now uh, in the meantime uh, I will see what I can do about fitting this ballast into here um, the problem is there are no mounting holes or anything like that um, well yeah there is mounting holes you got four screw holes there but uh, I'm not sure how even to rearrange this first I'll have to shut this off and uh, disconnect everything here's another issue with the whole resistor thing watch what happens when I cut the power off and uh, turn it back on now you know what will happen the lamp won't restrike it'll have to cool down at first but watch what happens watch the incandescent bulb there see that uh, when the lamp is not running the ballast draws a ton of current if I turn it on here and let you look at the current we're doing over an amp of current and uh, oh what's the voltage across the bulb there 68 volts so that bulbs doing 68 watts if I had like a uh, a 10 or 20 watt resistor in there and for some reason let's say the power went out and came back on or something and the lamp didn't restart that 10 or 20 watt resistor that burn right up that catch fire and everything so that's another problem um, there's two ways I could solve that I could put a fuse actually I plan on putting a fuse anyway just for a safety measure uh, put a fuse across there, a fuse rated for lower than uh, one amp, so in case something did happen and the lamp was in a hot restrike situation and the ballast was drawing a ton of current, the fuse would blow and that would save my resistor. Or I could just get a really high power resistor like that uh, 100 watt unit I showed you at first. Alright, it's almost two weeks later and this came in the mail. This is a 100 watt 30 ohm power resistor. I decided not to be a cheapo and get a 100 watt unit instead of a 10 or 20 watt unit because I figured, you know, despite what the units are rated for, they're probably only tolerable for long term use at a lot less than that. So I figured I'd better go all out. Um, it's quite a nice unit. Um, actually, it seems quite well made for uh, four bucks from China. But, uh, got a nice gold colored aluminum heat sink around it and it's epoxied inside there and it's got these rather nice quite large terminals uh, weighs all right um, and I, I looked at a like a North American company a real company that makes power resistors and looked at the specifications for their 100 watt resistor um, and this thing does uh, match those specifications like how uh, how large it is and stuff so uh, I think I got a half decent unit here I did measure the resistance and it came out at 31 ohms so that's good it did say 100 watt 30 ohms on there but it rubbed off with my finger um, and speaking of that other company which I looked at specifications for the specifications for their 100 watt resistors say that um, without another external heat sink attached to them there are only good for 30 watts so uh, I was right in getting a 100 watt unit because unless I have a secondary heat sink attached to this it's really only good for 30 watts anymore and it'll probably melt down although good thing is technically this will have a second heat sink on it the fixture itself since that's made of metal and everything and it's got the holes there so I can screw it down into the fixture um, only thing though, and again, I'm really glad I got a 100 watt unit instead of a 10 or 20 watt unit. I hooked this thing up to my 15 volt Toshiba laptop power supply just to test it out. And it was getting about 7 watts of power. And you can verify that if you do the Ohm's Law calculations. And with only 7 watts going through it, this thing got way too hot to touch. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping 
this doesn't get so hot that it causes problems given it's going to have 10 or 15 watts going through it inside the fixture but uh, we'll see what happens so what I'll do right now is uh, we'll wire this up just uh, a quick wire up in the fixture and uh, see how it does and we'll measure lamp current as well alright I got everything wired up here resistor right there let's uh, see what this baby does okay we have startup oops should have had my kilowatt oh well all we need is lamp current to go by resistor is getting lukewarm already something I never thought of that uh, I read about later was that because these resistors because the elements wound round and round and round I don't know how many times they can actually form a very minimal inductor on AC power so this resistors resistance on AC power might actually be slightly more than it is on DC power and uh, that could be a problem but I'll assume for now that uh, we won't have such a problem getting warmer quite warm now alright well I'll come back after we run up alright we're fully run up I uh, got a bit worried during the run up because current stayed really high I wondered if I fumbled my calculations but I didn't and uh, there's our lamp current exactly uh, exactly what I calculated it to be or rather the resistor, the resistance I wanted, I calculated exactly right, so that's good. And uh, that's our lamp current, which equates to maybe around 46 watts. Let's assume 100 volt, because I'm too lazy to measure it, times 0.56. And um, I've been doing some, recently I've been learning that the power factor for discharge lamps might be slightly higher than 0.9 so I'm going to say 0.95 and uh, yeah that might seem a little bit high I'm not really sure but I believe I've heard that full power for a 50 watt mercury vapor lamp is 0.6 amps so I'm not going to worry as far as I'm concerned that lamp current is absolutely perfect and uh, my calculations came out absolutely perfect so that's good how does this resistor feel? Oh, I can feel the heat coming off it. Way too hot to touch, that's for sure. But it seems alright otherwise. It doesn't seem like it's going to melt. Yeah, it's alright. So, uh, I wonder where to melt, or not where to melt, where to mount this resistor. At first I was thinking up here somewhere. But now I'm thinking maybe inside the fixture. The problem with putting it inside the fixture is it might have a bigger problem dissipating heat but the problem with mounting it up here is there's this silvery paper substance that's covering the whole uh, surface here and I'm afraid that if I were to put the resistor there it could pose a fire hazard could ignite that paper I'll figure something out some find some place to put this resistor oh frig maybe I should should have just gotten a capacitor but uh I like playing with resistors more. They're easier to do calculations for what kind of resistance uh, to get for a particular current. Because <clears throat> with capacitors you have to factor in power factor and AC frequency and all that sort of stuff. I could do it, I was just too lazy too for this application. But uh, otherwise, this resistor is working good. Oh, also, I completely forgot to mention, but you've obviously already seen, you've seen that I've uh, mounted the ballast here. I have a zip tie running all the way around and around the inside of the fixture and back out. Holds it pretty good. And I found, actually, despite my findings before, that after running for long periods of time, this ballast is very hot. The coils are alright, but the, uh, the core itself is too hot to the touch. But I'm going to assume that it's normal. This ballast would have been designed to handle the heat of being inside an enclosed fixture. So I don't think it's being stressed at all. So, I'll uh, find some way of attaching this inside the fixture and uh, then we'll come back. But uh, 
for our demo test here. Looks like it was a flying success. Well, here's the final product. I, uh, I removed the, some of the cardboard reflective backing and uh, it was uh, interestingly like the back of the fixture. It was all rusted underneath here so I took some sandpaper and cleaned that off the best I could and uh, drilled a couple of holes, mounted the resistor there and uh, that yellow wire is the wire uh, coming to the ballast and then the black wire is coming from the neutral wire of uh, power and uh, I just have the resistor wired there and uh, I probably should uh, solder the uh, ends of the wires onto the resistor there. I haven't bothered yet but they hold pretty steady there. And uh, I've had this running and uh, all in all it works really well. And here's what the internal compartment of the fixture looks like. Power factor, capacitor, and uh, you can see the holes there where I drilled to uh, mount the resistor. And of course I've made sure that none of the wires are in that general area since of course it gets quite hot. And uh, all in all, I'm uh, quite pleased with how this turned out. And you can see how I at least attempted to clean as much of the rust off the back as I could just because it doesn't look pretty. All in all, I'm uh, quite pleased with how this turned out. I would call it a success, most definitely. And uh, now, to end this video, I'll set this thing up uh, where I plan to keep it, which is on top of uh, one of my shelves, and uh, we'll show it running, and uh, see how well it lights up the room. Well, there's the final product. I decided to orient it this way now, instead of my original plans to uh, have it up on its side. Reason being that it causes less physical stress on the ballast, which is of course hanging by that zip tie. And uh, it helps diffuse the light better, because when I have it aimed this way, because it's still, you know, a, uh, a, a, a less spread out light source than say a fluorescent lamp. It still causes shadows sometimes, but uh, if I run it like that, it's uh, pretty good. So uh, I have my ceiling light out. I'll turn this out. I'll turn that out. And uh, there's what it looks like. Um, before, uh, when on the original ballast, the Advance L140 FTP, I took some pictures with my camera and I compared brightness to various other light sources and it was dimmer than a 40 watt incandescent lamp and uh, I've done the same test since uh, putting in the new ballast and this thing is now brighter than a 100 watt incandescent lamp and it's brighter than an F30 T12 fluorescent lamp so uh, yeah I'd say all in all really good show I can remove the, uh, the globe and there you go There's everything. So, there you go. I think I'll cut things off here. There is my uh, newly upgraded 50 watt mercury vapor, or with a very minor modification, 75 watt mercury vapor or 50 watt metal halide glass drum light fixture. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. And, uh, I'll see you guys next time.